Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick walk around video of the SLC and everything going on with it. Um, I've been working on it a little bit every night since it got delivered, um, but uh, had, a, had quite a few questions on Facebook, Instagram, forums on how everything is going to be run and uh, different configurations and stuff like that. So I figured I'd just do a full walk around video as I hadn't done one in depth yet. Um, and I'll try to remember all the details as we go, but here's the engine, uh, engine bay transmission. It's got a Graziano six speed transmission out of a, um, R8, I believe, uh, Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, so I I'm not sure if this one has the, um, the uh, different gearing ratio for the LS, um, but I guess I'll find out when I get it running. Um, it's a LS376 engine. It's a crate motor GM, brand new, uh, never been run with a, uh, a dry sump system for the oiling. And you can kind of see the, there's the oil pump down there uh, running off the crank. <clears throat> and as you can see there, that's the, uh, the engine mounts, which, uh, one thing I like about it is it's uh, mounted on rubber, which is really nice. Um, it's going to keep the vibrations down and stuff. Um, as far as the exhaust, these are LS7 headers, I believe. Um, and it's got the catalytic converter down there right now. Um, I intend to leave it for emissions reasons, but here in Florida, it's not really necessary. But anyway, for now, I'll leave it. And um, I got to finish welding that up uh, one day here soon. But basically, it's going to come out the bottom here, um, shoot underneath the transmission, come up through here, uh, this little w window. Um, we're going to wrap it around, and it's going to go in. Actually, it's going to go in here, cut across, and there's a, a nice H-pipe built there. And then it's going to come out that side uh, to the exhaust tip. Um, on the other side, i walk around the car here. <clears throat> it's a little bit straighter shot. Um, there's a lot more room to work with. Uh, the other side must have the differential on it. Um, but this side has a flex pipe on it. It's already made up. And <clears throat> this pipe here is going to come out. It's just gonna have a loop, come around, go in this side, uh, come through here to the exhaust tip there. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the exhaust tips. Um, I've thought about actually running, uh, running them straight up through the, um, the fiberglass body here, out the top, similar to the Porsche uh, supercar. Not sure if I'm going to do that or not. Um, there's a couple windows if you can see. Uh, for the, they could go out the back there up top when the body is folded. So there's some options. Um, a lot of room in here for uh, for turbochargers later on. I'm noticing. <laughs> uh, moving moving forward a little bit. I've got the AC lines, they're made up. I just need to crimp these uh, fittings on. And those run the side of the car with some nice mounting blocks up to the front. And hard line to the condenser. And then through a nice AC bulkhead there. <clears throat> so, Uh, I really like that configuration. It's it's nice and clean, and um, I really like the radiator mount as well. Uh, it's mounted, if you can see here, it's got rubber rubber mounts as well um, to the chassis, and that's going to help a lot with vibrations. The AC condenser down here is mounted very nicely. Uh, it's nice and rigid. Um, sits about an inch in front of the, um, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch up in there after this lip, um, to the radiator fins. So, 
Um, that's pretty nice. We've got a soft line going to the um, the other side of the condenser, the high pressure side. Uh, the last thing I need to do is cut this here and um, splice in the, it's actually a binary switch. Um, it's not a trinary switch, but uh, splice that in this line here after the dryer. And so the AC lines run down uh, driver's side of the car and I'm in the process of mocking up the hard lines for the coolant, which are going to run down the heater, the heater uh, core lines, which are going to run down this side of the body, uh, 10 AN configuration. And I've actually um, removed the nipples here, three quarters and um, five eighths for the uh, heater line. And I'm going to actually put some AN adapters in here. So I got to thread these uh, NPT and then put the adapters in. <clears throat> um, a little trick as an aside to doing that, uh, I made a, made a little tool here to pop those things out. So I tried a couple different ways to get the, uh, to get those um, coolant nipples out and nothing worked. Uh, so hang on one second, let me spin this. So I made this tool with a long bolt that I had. And what I did was I used a nut on this side and this is the part that was um, pressed into the block or into the water pump here. And um, I put the, let's see, I put a washer here and a, and a large socket as a spacer and a nut on the back. And then I put the bolt in through the, um, the nipple into the, uh, the water pump and put a nut on the back side. And then I just tightened this nut here down until that, um, while holding the bolt stationary. And that basically pressed out the, um, this fitting. So I looked up a bunch of things on, uh, YouTube and internet to try to find a way to do this and there wasn't a great way a lot of people were using these to kind of spin them and uh, I tried that I tried drilling a hole through the actual um, nipple itself and then using you know a long rod going through the hole um, uh, <laughs> and uh, that didn't work um, so I ended up cutting them off with a, cutting them off short with a sawzall and then doing the bolt method with the socket and that worked really well so um, if you want to pull those out it take like it take like 30 seconds each one if you do it that way um, so yeah the hard lines are there uh, so we're gonna run a soft line from the uh, water pump down to those lines uh, here they run up the front of the up to the front of the car here and then <clears throat> I have my heater control valve here uh, mounted to the frame. I'm waiting on some new hardware to come in. I'll try to get a better view on this side. So it's mounted right there. This is the solenoid and uh, you can't see it. The weep for the seal is actually on the underside on the underside here on the back side. So when the seal goes, it's going to drip and it's going to hit the floor or hit the uh, um, hit the ground it won't be dripping on the inside which is really nice um, otherwise i would have just put it inside here to the interior but i wouldn't want a massive leak on the interior of the car so we just put it there and i'll just loop the lines here um, to here and these are ac fittings um, air conditioning uh, mail insert o-ring fittings uh, in number 10 uh, size and one thing that I found online that's going to help out is this number 10 thread, uh, external thread here, is actually the same size thread as a dash 10 AN fitting. And uh, I think Four Seasons makes a little adapter with an O-ring that goes in here and converts the O-ring, internal O-ring insert to a uh, dash 10 AN fitting with a 37 degree JIC uh, flare to it. And that's gonna be really cool. So all I'll have to do is just put an AN uh, nut, tube nut on there or line end. 
um, and that'll be uh, perfectly sealed. So that's the plan there. This is the lift pump. So the suspension has um, hydraulic lift kit on the front to go over any speed bumps and lift everything up. Um, uh, one other thing, I don't know if you can kind of see down in there. Um, I made a linkage system that will connect to the back of the brake pedal here and you might be able to see it move. Um, it's this part right here. Um, and that fits on and attaches to the back of the, um, to the brake pedal where the two master cylinders used to be. And the reason I'm doing this is I plan on running a um, brake booster on the front here and doing uh, basically vacuum brake boost power brakes uh, to assist with stopping power. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I did a video and uh, some solid work design stuff on the linkage system that I made for the brakes. And right now I'm just kind of, I've, I've ordered a couple of the, <clears throat> um, a couple brake boosters off of a couple different vehicles to do some testing to see a, which one fits because there's really not a lot of space right here. Uh, that's about where the master cylinder can fit. It's about 10 inches from the front of the extended foot box here. So, um, I got a Camaro, um, brake booster with master cylinder because these, uh, calipers, um, four wheel calipers are, are designed, um, and used. They're very similar, if not the same as the 2010, 2015 Camaro brakes. The other one I got is a mini Cooper master brake, uh, brake master cylinder and, um, brake booster combination because that one is extremely low profile. So if the Camaro one doesn't fit, I'm going to attempt to use the, uh, mini Cooper and see if I can make that fit. And hopefully I don't have to make anything or do anything custom, uh, to either one of those. Hopefully one of those options just work. Um, oh, the last thing, the, uh, Coolant lines for the main radiator coolant lines are done stainless steel. It's it's uh, it's nice. It snakes around and then follows the contour of the body um, down here all the way to the back. And now I need to complete the back of the lines, um, but that's all done and it uh, snakes around nicely. The these ports here um, I'll just use as service ports. Um, I'm gonna cap these off now. Originally they were gonna go for the, or go to the heater core, but I have the heater control valve set up this way um, and I don't have to loop it back at the block, so that's good. So uh, there's one on this side as well. So this is returned back to the engine. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the status of the car and everything that uh, I have planned out right now. And, oh, the, uh, fuel hat here I put in as well. That's a really nice Fitec piece. Uh, runs a three, I have a um, Aeromotive 340 Stealth fuel pump in there, which is gonna be really plenty for, for the LS engine that I have in the back. And I'll use 6A in um, fuel lines and that'll be enough there. So I guess the last thing I'll talk about is the, <clears throat> it's kind of tight in here right now. Um, I intend on putting the battery here. Um, this is where the surge tank, factory surge tank, which is over there sitting in the corner, or the, the surge tank that was designed to go in the car, uh, was designed to, to go, I guess, or um, some of the other fuel peripheral equipment. But since everything I'm doing is gonna be basically a little bit more slimline, uh, there's gonna be some baffling in the tank, creating a surge protector in the tank around that fuel pump, and um, I'll have a fuel filter in line here, and then I'm just going to go straight out through here after creating a, a firewall. I'll have some ports go straight out from here, have my fuel pressure, uh, regulator here mounted to this rail and then straight up to the, um, 6AN fitting on the LS engine here on the fuel rail there. Um, and I think what I'll do here is, is I'll just put the battery, 
Uh, I sized it out for a 24F standard size battery is going to fit nicely right there. Um, and there's, there's actually quite a bit of room I can, I can uh, play with, but the seat sits more uh, in this way. So what I intend on doing, if I do it that way, I'll cut a window in the um, interior and put a panel cover here so that I can quickly access the battery if I need to right there. And that should be sufficient for uh, doing a battery shut off or um, really just any kind of disconnect. I, I think I'll probably do a um, automated battery shut off with my CompuStar system, but that is about it. If I have anything else, any probably wait to do another video for a while till I have some meaningful progress done. But uh, just for those asking how everything was was looking, this is it. All right, thanks.